we didn't have a name for a while, you know, and then Steve uh, knew, he used to go to Italia Conte drama school and he knew some lovely little girls in Kensington and so we went back to one of the little, lovely little girls house and we were just talking about names and she said the band was great so uh, we haven't got a name and she said yeah, well why didn't you call yourself the small faces because we've all got little faces and we've got small faces and we just burst out laughing and just kept taking the mickey out of the name and it kind of we took the mickey out of the name so much we just it just stuck with us we couldn't get rid of it We like three little art Artful Dodgers, if you see what I mean, because you know Steve Merritt was played the original Artful Dodger, Dodger in Oliver, and it, I mean Steve was a real Artful Dodger anyway, so it kind of rubbed off on us. So we were little Dodgers. We should have called ourselves the Dodgers. Uh, yeah, no, it definitely was because I grew up in black and white just after the war, and all the all the all the people used to wear in the East End also were grey and black, and, and the old ladies used to wear black gowns and stuff like that, they look like nuns. And in the pie and mash shops you can see them when they take their teeth out <laughs> and start eating jelly deals and they'll go mum, 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 And it's just funny to watch, but they're all black and white. So the minute I saw a red jumper in Allgate and next to Blooms, there's a little shop, the Craters used to buy their stuff there as well. And I saw this bright red jumper and I thought, I've got to have it, colour, colour. It's unbelievable. It reminds me of that Steven Spielberg movie in the opening shot during the war. It's all in black and white and suddenly this little girl walks it along in, in, a, in a, funny enough, in a red jumper. So it just struck me just like that. So I thought, that's, I've, that's what I've got to do. So I, it took me two weeks to save up 30 bob to go and buy the jumper. So I got the jumper, put it on. I, ma I managed to, uh, um, a, uh, what do they call it? Um, st uh, not stain, uh, bleach a pair of Levi's and to white. So I had white Levi's and I bought myself a pair of red socks, hush puppies. And, you know, and everyone started copying it, so it was great. I taught myself how to play drums and then I heard about a band in, in playing in the pub called the British Prince near me. And I kept watching this drummer play in a jazz band. And I watched, went out there two or three weeks, just sitting right in front of the drummer. And he got paranoid and came to see me and he said, uh, are you taking the piss out of me? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you keep blinking at me. I said, oh, I know. So every time you play, you know, you go like that, and you do a feel like that. You just keep blinking. He went, no, I don't. I went, oh, sorry, I thought I'm upset. And so I put my foot in it. So, and I got to know him, and uh, went up watching him for another couple of weeks, and then suddenly I saw. Um, oh, I'll see. No. Then he said, oh, right, I'm going to introduce you to another to see another drummer, we're going to invite a young drummer up and he's going to play. I thought, well great, I can watch another drummer, that's, that's going to be something to see. And then he introduced me. <laughs> and, and then I was petrified, I just jumped, when I got on the drum kit, shaking like a leaf. And these, these guys started counting in, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, it was jazz, jazz beat, you know? and it sounded like, wow, two, everything went to slow motion. But I ended up playing and finished the song and then got off very quickly and sort of sat shaking on the table. Then the barman came up to me afterwards and said, he said, that was great. He said, are you in a band? I said, no, I'm forming a band now. You know, I said, I've got a drum kit, I'm learning how to play it. And, I, and he said, well, my, my brother has just bought a, a guitar and he's learning how to play it at the moment. Shall I bring him down next week? So I said, yeah, great. So the next week, uh, he brought his brother down and it was Ronnie Lane, walked through the door. So that's how we met. So we formed a band called The Outcasts and it rest is history. I think we were trusting to impress each other and sort of, um, uh, we really, well, we were trusting because we liked it, you know, we weren't trying to impress anyone. We just felt good about wearing this new, new sort of clothes that we were discovering each of us, you know. What did you do there? We'd already met him, so we invited him that day to the gig we had in the evening, which is at the Earl of Derby. And uh, we invited him to play with us, and he did. We introduced him to the crowd, and, and uh, he jumped up on the piano, started to play the piano, then he jumped on top of it, started to sing, brought the house down, everyone loved him. Then he jumped all over the piano and jumped on the keys and broke all the keys off. Not, on not intentionally, but that's what happened. Anyway, the landlord didn't like that, he broke his bloody piano, so he threw us all out. And that was it. So we ended up sitting on the pavement 
uh, on my drum, uh, my Ronnie Lane's amp and my drum cases, and we just looked at each other and just burst out laughing. That was the beginning and the formation of the Small Faces. We had this telepathic sort of thing going on where, where we never told each other what to do, we just did it. We were just very good at sort of sussing each other out. Yeah, and I like to call it telepathic, it's a nice word. The telepathics. I only buy an ashtray in Boston when it, they threw it over the, onto the stage and it, it's, I don't know if it's supposed to hit, but it hit me straight on the head. And uh, I still kept playing after coming to roughly. And then, uh, and I thought I was sweating, you know, I thought, I, could you know, I thought, finally, I don't what that was. So just playing away and I was just wiping the sweat away. And as I went like that, it, instead of sweat, it was blood. And I just went, oh no, I just fell backwards like that. And I, my, my legs in the air. And, and so you can see there's a pair of legs behind the drum kit. And they called the ambulance and they whisked me away. And I had stitches in my head and a concussion, God knows what. And when I saw these shoes, because, uh, I used to wear shoes very similar to this in the 60s. And they remind me so much of that. And uh, Mod Shoes have done such a great job of uh, reproducing these. But they're actually, the ones in the 60s were made, you know, the ones in the 60s were made very quickly and these are proper handmade shoes. They're worth every penny of two and six. You can buy, buy them for me even cheaper, for a shilling. Old money though. <laughs> Call it half stink. I wonder who's been wearing them, not like Kenny Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if every pair has been worn by you officially before we've said <laughs> that. Every pair has been officially worn by me and my dirty socks. <laughs>